Our PBL is on the global water crisis. The global water crisis is a big problem that affects everyone. Unfortunately, people all over the rail don't have access to safe water. Safe water is clean, drinkable water. To research the water crisis, we read lots of books and did research on the internet. We went on field trips to places like the Mercer Slough and the Gates Foundation. We also heard from lots of guest speakers. First, we had Sarah from Water First, who told us about toilets and safe water. Next, we learned about the differences between salt water and fresh water from oceanographers James and Sue. Kevin Flick told us about a water filter he in, um, invented and tested in India and Africa. Sean O'Neill, a geologist for the King County Wastewater Department, taught us about wastewater treatment. And Bill Masco taught us all about water justice. During this unit, we asked a lot of big questions. How do we get our water? What happens when we don't have safe water? Where do we get our water from? In places where people have to walk for water, what impact does this have on those communities? And finally, why do we need to conserve our water? All of our research and guest speakers helped us answer these questions and showed us how everything is connected. One of the first things we learned about was the water cycle. We talked about the three stages of the water cycle, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. This cycle repeats itself over and over again. So all the water that we have gets recycled. But even though our water moves in a cycle, we can only use safe fresh water. And fresh water is scarce. Only 1% of the water on Earth is safe to drink. We learned that there are two reasons for the global water crisis. First, there's physical scarcity, which means that there isn't any water in a particular place. Then, there's economic scarcity, which means that there's water, but not enough money or resources to get it. Because safe water is scarce, 2.5 billion people around the world do not have access to clean water and a toilet. Because not everyone has access to clean water, each year 5 million people, mostly children under 5, die from water-related illness. The physical and economic scarcity of water forces people to travel long distances to get the safe water they need. Every day, 200 million women and girls walk for water. Every drop their family uses. Finally, we learn that we all live down the stream, which means that the way we treat water affects the water that other people use. Here in Seattle, we're lucky to have unlimited access to clean, safe water. But we're all connected and the water we have on Earth today is all the water we will ever have. It is a finite resource. 
We need to conserve it so that everyone can have access to the safe water that they need. There are lots of things we can do to conserve water, like take shorter showers, turn off the water while you brush your teeth, turn off the water while you wash your dishes, and slow your faucet to a drip when you heat your water. We also need to protect water and not pollute it. We can do this by putting only toilet paper in our toilet and not using chemicals in our gardens. It's also important for us to raise awareness of the global water crisis and the things we can do to protect and conserve our water. Little things can make a big difference because we're all connected. It's important for us to look out for our earth and other people by working to conserve and protect the limited water we have.